Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. This week, we sit down with the Farm Service Agency Director for the state of Kansas, David Shem. We discuss some of the programs available to Kansas farmers and ranchers who suffered losses due to the weather over the winter and some of those timelines to get the losses turned in and when payments could begin. Also, we'll talk about the new farm bill and when it will start to be implemented. We'll also have reports to the Kansas Soybean Commission and Kansas Department of Agriculture and our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and market analysis from Paragon Ag Advisors. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919, kfb.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leading in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online, kswheat.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future of Kansas Corn, online, kscorn.com. In Ag News from agview.net, Kansas corn growers intend to plant 5.7 million acres this year. That's up 5% from 2018, according to USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service. Soybean planted acres expected to be 4.95 million acres, up 4% from a year ago. Winter wheat acres seeded in the fall of 2018 estimated at 7 million. That's down 9% from a year ago. Sorghum growers in Kansas intend to plant 2.75 million acres, 2% lower than a year ago as well. All hay acreage to be harvested expected to be 2.45 million acres. That's up 4% from last year's acreage. Some flower producers expected to plant now 60,000 acres, up 13% from 2018. The oil varieties count for about 38,000 acres, down 12% from a year ago. But those non-oil varieties made up the balance of the 22,000 acres, up 120%. Oat intentions estimated at 135,000 acres, up 13% from last year. And canola planted acreage expected to be at 29,000 acres, down 38% from 2018. Now, cotton producers expect to plant 170,000 acres, up another 3% from a year ago. That would be a record high if realized. Now, estimates of this report based on surveys conducted during the first two weeks of March. And nationally, farmers expect to plant 92.8 million acres of corn this spring. That would be a 4% rise over 2018. And soybean acres projected 84.6 million acres, down 5% from a year ago. Now, the wheat planting could set the wrong kind of record this year, as nationally, all wheat acres forecasted 45.8 million, down 4% from 2018. Now, if that does hold true, that would be the lowest all wheat acreage on record since 1919. That was the year that USDA began keeping track. Well, U.S. agriculture will face challenges in 2019 as slowing domestic and global economic growth rates and trade talks continue as well as weather casts uncertainty in the short and long-term markets. U.S. commodity markets remaining focused on potential progress in the U.S.-China negotiations as well as the ratification of the USMCA agreement pending the removal of the U.S. steel and aluminum tariffs. Current trade disputes and global acreage moves for the crop year could ease, though, some downward pressure on prices. A slowing global economy, though, could force animal protein and dairy sectors to scale back some plant production increase as the year unfolds. Well, the latest quarterly rural economic review from CoBank's Knowledge Exchange Division is indicating that as global and U.S. economic growth has slowed, those financial conditions in agriculture remain highly variable across commodities as well as regions. Stay with us, Kansas State FSA Director David Shem, when we return on the Kansas Ag Report. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web, oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Grass and Grain, 
online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com And Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. More at ksgrainsorghum.org. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Well, joining us now is David Shim, who is the uh, state director for the Farm Service Agency. Uh, David wanted to try to get you on and tell them folks we're going to, but you've been busy and uh, uh, lots of things going on. And, and so when we're taping this, you just got back from touring some of the northeastern part of Kansas. So we'll talk about that, then let's talk about winter. So kind of give us that status update of what do we know right now. Well, you know, as opportunity, we wanted to be able to get up there into the flooding area that's occurring here in northeast Kansas. And, you know, Ken, one of the things that really struck me is that, uh, you know, I saw the pictures on, on, uh, on, on TV and, and, on, and on news media there about the amount of flooding that's going on out there. And it just hits you in the heart, you know, about the devastation going up there and actually seeing it firsthand. That's like a gut punch. I mean, just really the devastation that our producers are dealing up with there. Uh, water is still standing. The water has started to recede some. I think what really struck home for me, though, was that we looked at several of those fields and we see sprinklers out there that you barely see the top arches of those sprinklers. The tires are fully submerged in water out there. Um, and the, the producers there are sitting there telling us that we're not even necessarily in the peak flooding season, mm -hmm. that this flooding very well could continue on. In fact, typically their flooding season can go right into mid July. So very, very concerned for those producers. Now, I know Farm Service Agency has been one of those right in the middle to try to find assistance. I mean, obviously, the first thing is, is the outstanding outpouring of just neighbor versus ne you know, uh, neighbor from, from, from all over the surrounding states yeah, have come in. But, but let's maybe talk about a couple programs specifically that because it's been a while, and so farmers need to be aware of what is available to them. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things that can happen for us, and uh, we have our, our state emergency board that are going to be meeting here very shortly. Uh, they'll look at it and evaluate it and, and see the amount of loss that has occurred there. Uh, but one of the things we'll be looking at is recommending whether or not that, that the secretary uh, declares that as a disaster area. When that happens, what can happen is for those uh, disadvantaged producers that are needing financial assistance there, we can make available, you know, low, low interest loans for them. Uh, a couple of programs that can very, also can very quickly help them or, or producers need to be aware of, uh, specifically for our livestock producers, our livestock indemnity program. So when they have lost that livestock to the flooding there, they can come in, make sure they notify our offices of the, of the death, and then uh, that way they will be able to get signed up for the livestock indemnity program. Uh, the other program that can help those producers right away is the emergency livestock assistance program. And basically that's for the producers that have had feedstocks, you know, hay, whatever, that have gotten washed away, that we can offer that financial assistance for those producers as well. So again, they need to come in, report the losses there, be able to show a beginning inventory, and then we can be able to help them out. That's a lot of things we've kind of seen out there is before really the cleanup, go take pictures as well and kind of, and hopefully most people probably did have an inventory, sure. give or take, you sure. know, with, with their hay and, and how much at least tonnage they right. had maybe right. going in the winter. Right. No, absolutely. You're, you're right. Get out there, take some pictures for us. Make sure you can get date time stamp on those pictures there. That way that helps us give something to be able to work off, to be able to help those producers. We're talking with David Shem, the state director for the Farm Service Agency. We'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB. Dot org. 
Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat, and agview.net, covering news and views in the beef belt and western corn belt. Reliable and relevant, agview.net. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Our guest is David Shim, the Kansas uh, State Director for the Farm Service Agency. Uh, David, the other thing we'll, we'll talk about, uh, the winter was one that we'll remember for a long time. Absolutely. Uh, calving season just about wrapped up for those that did the winter calving. Uh, we've seen some areas have have heavy losses. So I think there are some programs. Let, let's remind folks again with maybe had some of those losses over the winter time. Yeah, absolutely. We had some of these uh, storms come in here and specifically hit these producers right here during calving time. Obviously very, very concerning time with not only cold temperatures but also blizzard conditions, rain coming in on these producers. So like I referenced earlier, we have the Livestock Indemnity Program, Ken, and, and so what's critical for our producers, I, again, is to report that loss of those calves uh, within 30 days of, of that loss. Get in there to our offices, report that loss. Now, uh, part of the conditions of a new farm bill is we're, we're still in the process of getting some of those regulations and policies policies written out there, so we're waiting for some, some final prices to be set, some mm -hmm. components of the program there, and we're actually expecting a lot of that information to be coming down here very shortly here within the time frame. Looks like it, it might end up being a little bit into May before we get some of the final parts of it down here, but then being able to start to issue out those uh, payments back to our producers. So very critical for our producers right now is get in there to your offices and notify your offices of your loss take pictures of, that, of, of those there, show those pictures. Okay, uh, through all this, uh, we, we did a run up towards the end of the year, market facilitation program, information, payments, and so on, that we had the government shut down, and there's, I know there are producers that didn't get that done. We are under a deadline, it's, it's not critically right away, but you're, we're into a new crop season now, so uh, what, what are our deadlines and, and uh, what information again are they needing? Absolutely. So uh, the the ability to sign up for the MFP program, that ended back on February 14th for mm -hmm. our producers to sign up the program. As far as reporting right. production, though, you know, telling us how much production you did have, uh, that deadline is uh, May 1st mm -hmm. uh, for our producers out there. So, and I know we still got some cotton guys. I, we still have some, uh, you know, grain in, in bins and everything like that. So there is still time for them to report that production, get that in there to report us there. Uh, we've already been able to pay out a lot of money and get a lot of producers signed up on that. Okay, you mentioned earlier the new farm bill, and uh, uh, let's talk implementation. When when are you and your team here in Manhattan going to get some training and then go out to those county offices? Because I know farmers are, are, are you know, they, they want to get those things taken care of as well, but they go to the county office now and they say, well, we don't know exactly for sure. We're still waiting for all those 
little fine information to be out there. Ab absolutely. So right now, our national office is, is, is working on getting jump teams together or, or task force teams together to try to look at and figure out how to write the policies and procedures for these programs uh, and also to be able to write basically some of the, the software for the programs and make sure we get into it. We're, we're kind of expecting some of the initial training uh, to come out from the national office, specifically on some of the livestock programs here towards the latter part of May uh, with that sign up on, on the DM, uh, dairy margin coverage uh, coming shortly thereafter, uh, early parts of June, uh, and then be able to, because obviously our dairy producers have been hurting out there, and we're very mm -hmm. concerned about them, and hopefully being able to start to get some payments out there in July. Some of the other programs, we have some later targeted sign-up dates, uh, September kind of a sign-up date for our PLC is what we're hoping for. Again, we're waiting for some of that information to come out from national office. From our perspective, from a state, we uh, already have uh, our, our, our developing reports and developing task force teams to develop a structure so that we know we can quickly get our, our county offices up to speed and trained, uh, but we're also really, really eager to start to outreach to our producer and get the information out there. All right, David, we appreciate the update. We've been through a lot of different information, but again, folks can always go to the FSA website and get a lot of those broad things taken care of. Absolutely. Right? Go to our website, go to our county offices, and we'll get you the information. All right, David Shem, State Director for the Farm Service Agency in Kansas, has joined us. We'll have more coming up. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. During April, National Soy Foods Month, Kansas soybean farmers encourage everyone to discover simple, tasty soy foods. They offer numerous choices for today's health-conscious consumers and can be included in the diet many ways. Traditional soy foods include tofu, tempeh, soy nuts, and edamame, to name a few. They are easy to prepare and incorporate into your favorite dishes. Soybean oil is the most commonly consumed vegetable oil in the United States. Read the label and you will find the only ingredient is soybean. Food companies develop new products containing soy protein, from veggie burgers to fortified pastas and cereals. Many recognize it as a versatile food ingredient with functional and nutritional properties that greatly enhance finished foods in all consumer categories. Products containing soy appear in nearly every aisle in the supermarket. National Soy Foods Month also is a great time to remember that animal agriculture is the largest processor of soybeans. In fact, poultry, livestock, and seafood consume nearly all the soybean meal produced in this country. That is why the Soybean Checkoff encourages consumer choices toward a balanced diet, funds research to improve both soy foods and soybean meal, and supports programs in animal agriculture. You can find more resources, including the brand new commission-sponsored Soy Foods Guide and more than 500 recipes at kansassoybeans.org slash soyfoods on the web. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. 
As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. The addition of the Industrial Hemp Research Program in Kansas has made this spring an exciting time at the Kansas Department of Agriculture, as several program areas have worked to expand services and procedures to incorporate this new agricultural crop into the agency. When the state legislature enacted the Alternative Crop Research Act in 2018, it set into motion a year full of program development, public outreach, and interagency collaboration as we all worked to make it possible for Kansas to stand up this new program in such a short window of time. KDA staff has worked to develop regulations to oversee the Industrial Hemp Research Program, incorporating information gathered from public forums, other agencies, other states with similar programs, and other sources. The Plant Protection and Weed Control team added a full-time staff member to coordinate the program, and will be expanding and training our inspection staff in preparation for the sampling that will be required. KDA has developed a new database to support the issuing of new licenses and the flow of information that will be involved. And the Agricultural Laboratory acquired new lab equipment and is training and developing procedures for the lab staff to handle the in-house regulatory samples. Applications were due March 1st, and KDA received 370 applications for five license types, administrative, state institution, processor, distributor, and grower. Applications that were complete and that meet all regulatory requirements have been forwarded to the advisory board for review, which will make recommendations to the secretary. Applicants that are conditionally approved and submit their license fees will be issued a license. Expanding our program to incorporate the Industrial Hemp Research Program in less than a year has been an exciting challenge for KDA, and we are pleased to be able to issue licenses this spring. We appreciate all of the input and feedback we have received throughout the past year from so many of you. If you have additional questions or want to follow the progress of the program, you can do so at agriculture.ks.gov slash industrialhemp. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Twelve chefs from Kansas City and California gathered in late March in Napa, California for an intense two-day beef culinary immersion workshop. The checkoff sponsored event, coordinated by the Kansas and California Beef Councils, was held at the prestigious Culinary Institute of America's Copia campus. The workshop focused on two areas, beef production and beef's flavor dynamics in world cuisine. National Cattlemen's Beef Association Senior Director of Sustainable Beef Production Research Sarah Place led a discussion on beef sustainability and California rancher Celeste Citrini gave an overview of life on the ranch. Chef Barry Strand, a member of NCBA's culinary team, identified beef opportunity cuts and highlighted menu applications for each. The group also toured Sonoma Mountain Herefords and Kunde Family Winery. Keith Bryant, cattle operations manager at Reeve Cattle Company near Garden City, attended the workshop to engage with chefs and answer additional beef production questions. The culinary immersion experience was a valuable way for chefs to learn and explore how beef can fit on a modern global menu that meets today's diverse consumer palate. It also allowed for conversations about beef production in general, which will pay dividends as chefs interact with consumers. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Hi everyone, Zach Otot here with Paragon Ag. The corn market is trying to find a little traction after taking a nosedive after the USDA's planning intentions report was released at the end of last week. The trade was already expecting a large number of corn acres to be planted, and when the estimate came in above the range of analysts, it pretty well confirmed what many were thinking. Doing so brought new crop December corn to contract lows. The extended weather forecast is calling for cooler and wet weather as much of the Midwest as we roll into planting season. If we see planting dates pushed back, we could see a push higher in prices but that price change due to later planting dates may come later rather than sooner. Soybeans have found a bit of strength after hearing news of an export order of 828,000 metric tons of beans to China this past week. As far as the trade deal goes, we are again hearing positive talks, but as the story continues, here we sit, still without an official deal in place. At this point, it seems that the trade is not too concerned with trade talks, but rather is waiting for a final deal written in stone. We had pressure on early in the week as we digested the USDA's crop ratings report. All winter wheat was rated at 56% good to excellent versus last year of 32%. As we have begun to warm up and wheat has been coming out of dormancy, we still run the risk of a late season freeze. With a smaller number of acres planted this year, any production issue would have a larger impact on price. Final decisions are difficult no matter what time of year. If you need to sell last year's crop or think you should be started on new crop but can't decide, consider an alternative strategy. Let us help find that strategy that fits you. Give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Otot. Have a great rest of your day. Well, that's the show. Be social with us online, kansasagreport.net, or on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com.